Hi, I'm Yu Chan Lee from Seoul National University. Today I'm gonna talk about EXP Lace exploring cotton laces through laser inserts. This is joint work with Professor Chang Min and my advisor, Yun Yang Lee. In this presentation, I would like to talk about the way to exploit lace conditions. So let's start with the definition of lace condition. Lace condition means that Results vary depending on the order of access to memory. Let's take an example. First, suppose the initial state of memory M is zero. And there are two instructions to write one to memory M and read from memory M. The order in which these instructions are executed will change the result of the read M instruction. If the read if the write instruction executes first and then the read instruction executes, the read value will be 1. And if the read instruction executes first and then the write instruction executes, the read value will be 0. These two instructions are called a lace instruction pair. A lace condition bug consists of two or more lace pairs. And lace condition bugs lead to memory caution, such as user for free or out of bound when executed in a specific order. However, it is very difficult to execute in the desired order on two different threads. But we can try infinitely many times through brute force until it is executed in the desired order. We found several laces are ex exploited with brute force. However, we found some case of lace, lace conditions which is hard to exploit with brute force. We have studied this type of lace condition is called a multivariable lace condition. The multivariable lace condition may also consist of multiple pairs of lace instructions but at this time, each pair access different memory. And there are two time windows between the four instructions. The case we found is that time window one is smaller than time window two. At this point, bugs must be executed in the order A, B, C, and D, but time window is fixed, making it impossible to exploit with brute force. So how to exploit this case of lace condition? We thought that if we could extend T1 and make it bigger than T2 in some way, it can be exploited with root force. Then how to extend the time window? We thought that we should print the thread execution by having another task run between instruction A and instruction D. So, which method can print the thread execution? Our first thought is corner breakpoint. If corner breakpoint exists in the time window, the corner stops learning. As a result, it can increase the time window. Second, by manipulating the scheduler. We can increase time window by context switching to another process while time window is running. Lastly, some kind of interrupt is received while executing the corner. At this point, the corner stops running and executes the interrupt handler first. As a result, time window is increased. However, there are rules for using these methods. Because ordinary kernel exploits are intended for elevation to root privileges in user mode, so they must be available in user mode. If you're gonna back to OS basics, users cannot control preemption method. Therefore, user cannot use breakpoint to extend the time window in its root privilege. Likewise, user cannot use scheduler and user cannot send the interrupt. However, we found very interesting aspect that user could not send interrupt directly, but user can use it indirectly. 
users can send the, send the interrupt indirectly by using system calls that send interrupts. We found interrupt which can stop the corner execution. There is four possible interrupt. Reschedule interrupt, memory interrupt, TAB shutdown interrupt, and hardware interrupt. How to use it? How to use each interrupt is described in the paper. There is another question left. How to send an interrupt to desired core? The answer to this question relates to the attribute of each interrupt. Rescheduling interrupt can send interrupt to any core. Thus, an attack can be carried out by pinning thread to a particular core to receive interrupts. Membrane interrupt and TAB shutdown interrupt are sent to core that have the same memory map. Therefore, interrupts can be sent by considering this when creating a process. Hardware interrupts are pinned to be processed at a specific core for each IRQ. Therefore, if you pin a thread to receive an interrupt on the core, you can get an interrupt. Let's see how the attack works as a whole. There is two threads, core 1 and core 2, and they race infinitely. At that time, if core 0 sends an interrupt to core 1, and that interrupt is delivered during T1, the kernel stops running and executes the interrupt handler first. So T1 is enlarged more than T2 and exploit will be succeeded. Here is the example of hardware interrupt. First, check the SMP affinity of IRQ. This is a specified value for which core handles the interrupt when a hardware interrupt occurs. So pinning the thread to corresponding core and when core 0 execute the connect system call, it will send the IRQ to core 7. Now, let's see ESP Lace working on near world Lace condition vulnerability. Error of listed vulnerability is multivariable Lace condition. We tested 10 vulnerabilities without ESP Lace and with each of interrupts. Without ESP Lace, the 24 hours long exploitation attempts were failed for all 10 real world vulnerabilities as expected, which is shown in baseline column. Using reschedule interrupt, three vulnerabilities were successfully exploited while the seven, case, seven cases failed. Using membrane interrupt, Three cases were successfully exploited. With TRB shutdown interrupt, eight cases, eight cases were exploited. And with hardware interrupt, all 10 cases were successfully exploited. All 10 vulnerabilities that are considered hard to exploit by general root sorting have been exploited with exp -Lace. And in order to check the effectiveness of exploiting other OSs using exp -Lace, we launched the exploitation against, against the synthetic LACE vulnerability developed as a kernel driver for Windows and OS X, respectively. Overall, this schedule and TLB shutdown has shown far more success number than baseline demonstrating the exploitation effectiveness of exp -Lace. For the conclusion, we studied the exploitability of kernel data laces, and we analyzed real-world kernel laces and found an intrinsic condition separating easy-to-exploit and hard-to-exploit laces. Then we developed exp -Lace a generic lazy exploitation technique for Linux, Windows, and OS X. Lastly, through evaluating with near-world lazy vulnerabilities, ESP Lace demonstrated 
that it truly augments the exploitability of kernel laces. Thank you for listening.